This exhibition explores the events, ideas and styles that really shaped Scottish art during the 1920s. All of the artists who are represented here in this exhibition had their careers and their work formed by this central period. All of the artworks that are in this exhibition come from our own permanent collection of fine art here at the City Art Centre, which covers a broad range of different subject matter, styles and themes. There's also a wide range of different artistic media here. So in this exhibition, we've got oil paintings, watercolours, drawings, examples of printmaking and also sculpture. There are 30 different artists represented in Bright Shadows. Some of them are well-known names. Some of them are artists who audiences are possibly less familiar with. We've got examples of works by some of the Scottish colourists, including J.D. Ferguson and S.J. Peplow. We've also got works by Stanley Cursiter, Dorothy Johnson, Adam Bruce Thompson, William Wilson, William McCants, and D.Y. Cameron. The 1920s was a period of significant social, political, and economic change, and all of the artists represented in this exhibition were touched by those changes in some way. When you say the 1920s to people, most people tend to think of this period of hedonism and decadent excess. They think of The Great Gatsby, The Bright Young Things, Art Deco design and jazz music. But actually this is only really one side of the story and in this exhibition I really wanted to explore some of the other facets to this 10 year period. The 1920s was also a period of sombre contemplation, reflection and actually real hardships for a lot of artists. One of the main themes I wanted to explore in this exhibition was the legacy of the First World War. The war only ended in 1918 and actually it cast a really long shadow over the whole of the 1920s. Some of the artists in this show fought in the First World War, some of them lost loved ones, others had their education or their careers redirected by the conflict. So it had quite a, a strong impact on many of the artworks in this exhibition. After the war, there was greater freedom for artists to travel. So a number of younger artists took the opportunity to go to Paris to study once again, to absorb some of the avant-garde influences that were taking place on the continent at the time and to imbue their own art with those influences. Another of the themes I wanted to explore in this exhibition was the plight of women artists during the 1920s. When we think of the 20s, we tend to think of it having kind of turned a cornerstone from the Edwardian period into the modern era. But actually, this was an age that still had quite a lot of gender-based discrimination towards women. One of the artists that I concentrate on in the exhibition is Dorothy Johnston who, although she was an incredibly talented artist and went on to become a teacher at Edinburgh College of Art, faced her own fights against discrimination. Another of the concepts within this exhibition is looking at the idea of the Scottish Renaissance. This was a movement that started off as a, a literary movement and overspilled into the arts, particularly the visual arts. It was the idea that Scotland had its own very unique um, cultural identity that it should cherish and promote and that younger artists should pick up this mantle and go forward. Essentially it was setting the seeds of the Scottish independence movement. Another of the key narratives within this exhibition looks at the influence of global economics on artists within Scotland. Now this is on several levels. On one hand there were great changes in terms of patronage and collecting and commissioning of artworks at around about this time. Prior to the First World War, a number of artists were able to make their livings through wealthy patrons, but increasingly after the First World War, they had to turn to other modes of making an income. So lots of artists turned towards teaching, for instance. A number of artists found that different genres were becoming particularly popular throughout the 1920s as well. So portraiture, for instance, became extremely popular among collectors. And printmaking as well underwent a real boom in the 1920s. A number of young artists really made their names as printmakers producing etchings and engravings at this point. The flip side of that was the Wall Street crash though in 1929, which saw the bottom really fall out of the printmaking sales market. And artists found that they really had to adapt professionally in order to make a living once again. One of the main artworks in the exhibition Bright Shadows is this portrait of Cecile Walton by Eric Robertson. It dates from 1920, so this is from right at the very start of this period. Eric Robertson was one of the main figures in the Edinburgh Group, which was a collective of young artists 
who formed just before the First World War and then reformed after the First World War when they staged a number of um, fairly notorious exhibitions. Robertson was progressive not only as an artist, he was interested in avant-garde styles and themes in his work, but also socially. He found even as an art student that some of his works were banned from exhibit because they were deemed to be too risque. Now this is a later work by him and it depicts the artist Cecile Walton. Cecile was another uh, graduate of Edinburgh College of Art. She was the daughter of the Glasgow Boys painter E.A. Walton. They married in 1914 and they exhibited together during the early 1920s. This painting came about because they went on holiday together in spring of 1920 to Korean Larrick and there were a series of waterfalls and pools behind the cottage that they were renting. They decided that they would start bathing nude there and apparently visitors who came to see them during this stay were also encouraged to bathe nude. This painting has a real sense of youthful confidence about it and I think kind of encapsulates some of the, the spirit of the early 1920s. Cecile is shown wearing only this jaunty, uh, brightly coloured hat over her fashionably bobbed haircut, very 1920s, and she looks directly out at the viewer. One of the things I really like about this painting is an element that many people wouldn't necessarily notice. It's actually this border of turquoise that runs the whole way round the painting and you can just see right beside the frame. This was a device that Robertson often used to add this extra zip of colour to his paintings. He would use bright colours, in this instance turquoise, in others maybe a bright orange. It wasn't necessarily a colour that would go with the rest of the composition, it was intended to jar and to contrast and to create something quite modern and dynamic. This is one of the main artworks within the exhibition Bright Shadows. It's called A Garment of War and it's by the artist D.Y. Cameron, David Young Cameron. It dates from around about 1926. This is one of a series of paintings that D.Y. Cameron produced based on his experiences in the First World War. When the war started in 1914, he was too old to enlist, but he was taken on as an official war artist by the Canadian Expeditionary Force. He produced a number of paintings based on his experiences actually at the front. In the autumn of 1917, he spent time at Passchendaele, where he produced sketches under constant threat of shelling and sniper fire. Later in January 1919, he returned to Ypres, where again he produced more sketches based on the shattered landscapes that he encountered. Now this is one of his later paintings. He produced a whole series of battlefield landscapes where he focuses on the devastation of the natural and built environment that he encountered on the Western Front. This one is one of his latest ones and it's one of his largest paintings on this series as well. You can see here the shattered buildings silhouetted against this enormous blazing sky which takes up most of the picture plane. The size of the canvas means that it has a real impact when visitors look at this, at this piece. And although it doesn't have any human content, there are no actual figures in this landscape, it very much reminds us of the losses that were suffered by people during the war. This painting is called Rest Time in the Life Class and it's by the artist Dorothy Johnson. It dates from 1923. Johnson was one of the first cohort of students to come through Edinburgh College of Art. She enrolled when she was just 16 and she was incredibly talented. In 1914, she became a member of staff at the Art College. She was part of the Edinburgh group and she met people like Cecile Walton and Eric Robertson through the Art College. Now, by all accounts, she was an excellent teacher. This painting actually shows one of her classes. It's a life class in which students would learn to draw human anatomy from real life nude or semi-draped models. Now, we can actually see Johnson in this painting. She crops up in the top corner here, um, standing working at an easel. It's quite an unusual painting in that she didn't normally paint her own self-portrait. And the students around her are actually real students that she was teaching at the art college in the early 1920s. The two in the foreground have been identified as Kay Price and Belle Kilgower. And the figure here in the centre is the, the model Poppy Lowe, who was a, a frequent modeller at the Edinburgh Art College at that time. And we can see that in this painting, the, the model herself is actually resting and Johnson is teaching. Now this is quite significant because the life class right up until the early 20th century wasn't open to women students at all. In the 19th century, 
women weren't allowed to take the life class on account of uh, moral censorship, basically. And so this is quite a significant painting. It's interesting to note that all of the students are female, and this is because the, the classes were all single sex at this point. This painting was exhibited in 1924, and the same year she got married to her fellow artist D.M. Sutherland, another member of the Edinburgh group. Unfortunately, by marrying, she meant, it meant that she had to forfeit her teaching position at Edinburgh College of Art. At this point, there was a marriage bar, which meant that women were not allowed to undertake full-time teaching positions if they were married. Johnson continued to paint, however, and interestingly, she continued to exhibit under her own maiden name. Thank you.